So in the last video, we got the rusty pug moving around, but there's obviously no physics at all yet. So let's just do the simple left and right and kind of friction, the walking physics to this game now. Let's just correct this position for now, just to make him look on the floor, because we haven't done gravity yet. So I believe it'll be maybe 112. We'll just keep going back in eights until we find it. There we go. So like 108. We'll move him over to the left a bit, so then he's in a good position to start with the movement. Now, if we just go to below where we have move character with joystick, uh, we'll also do, uh, say, movement physics. And we'll pass in the character as well. And we'll make a new method here called that. It will just need the character pointer. And that's it. Everything else should be accessible for now. And just before we do that as well, what we'll notice and what I noticed in the last one is with sort of this size sprite but you can see with the speed of movement at the minute the kind of just basic movement that looks a bit slow for the animation it's probably the right speed in terms of how fast we want the character moving but he looks a bit slow if we move quicker we're going to go off the edge of the screen too fast so i think we need to reduce the sprite down and it also takes up a lot of room even unanimated at the minute in the sort of tile set and sprites so quickly done at least one frame no animation yet, but this is like a smaller pug, so not as detailed, but I think it'll give much better gameplay. So that's exported and linked, just like any other tile. And let's look at how easy this is now to not only add a character, but we could just leave player two in here and show the smaller pug by the side of it. So all we'd have to do for that is load in the tile data again. So let's just find out where this tile sprite ends, which I guess you could just do a plus anyway to find out. Well, it ends at tile 57 index, so the index should be 58 where it starts at. And that should match the size here that says 58. So we can start at the size of this. So we just do set sprite. And then in here, use the previous size as the starting index. And the tile set now for the rusty small size. And load in the tile set for rusty small. We should have then a new sprite data. We can just copy the player one, paste it, and create a small rusty player. We'll call this player two. Sprite ID in this case needs to be, I believe it was 15. We wanted to start it at when we looked at where it kind of overlapped. And the sprite size is two by four this time. And we could even go smaller if we just nudge down one pixel. But I'm going to leave this open for animations and maybe like emojis or something popping up. And then change the tile map to the small tile map as well. We can even have the character moving. So we'll put him to the side of him. Let's try somewhere like there. And then we can even have them both moving by just doing this. And both have physics when we get around to it. And there we go. We have two rusties now. One big, one small. And we can see the difference it makes to have a slightly smaller pug. It looks a bit more realistic, and especially when he's animating, that we can fit more on the screen. So it doesn't look a huge difference, and it's a lot less detailed, which I can work on. But I think it's going to work better for gameplay. So with that small bit out of the way, let's go back to what we were originally planning, which is the physics. And let's just get rid of the larger uh, rusty pug for now. Now we know that works. And I can see we've also got some warnings here we'll fix in a moment. Change this to 2 by 4 change that to small, delete the second one. So let's just fix these bugs. Overflow of Im implicit constant conversion in the header. So we shouldn't ignore these. These are obviously important. Uh, it looks like we've cast something somewhere we shouldn't or haven't cast something. Uh, so move X and Y are unsigned ints, and then we're assigning it a negative number. So we need to fix that. Let's just make them signed integers and then scroll character i presume let's hope we have have we done the same mistake in scroll uh, that should be a signed integer because obviously it can go into the negative for moving left and right and then into the move should be left and right and even though the x and y on the screen are whole the amount we move by necessarily isn't so in fact, the move is probably meant to be unsigned integer because the character is never meant to move off screen. But then again, we can 
I believe we can move it off screen, but it just goes backwards to 256, so it doesn't matter. We'll keep it unsigned for the movement. But the scroll definitely should be integer based. Uh, there we go. Now it's just warning that we've got a method we're not using. So onto this movement physics. We currently have move character with joypad. And that scrolls the character. So instead of scrolling the character, uh, a movement. So we'll just add int eights and call them movement force for now. And instead of directly moving the character in the joypad, we will just set those values instead. And this is set movement force. And this allows us now to calculate physics and whatever else we want to do with that information. So now if we run it, we will apply movement physics. You should find out that you now can't move the character with the keyboard. And it's time to do the physics. So we could do physics pretty advanced. And I have done this already. So we could do full physics in terms of calculating with uh, real equations with gravity with friction and it's not that hard it sounds hard but it really isn't you just basically take your velocity you multiply by a fraction to get friction that slows down over time you can do you know simple things like that for gravity and movement but having done this already for game boy games what you'll find is most games so we just chuck mario in here it looks like you're going to have sort of a lot of movement physics and things but if you count the pixels or record the screen you'll find that mario is moving almost exactly one pixel a frame now he doesn't move one pixel a frame he moves one misses one moves one misses two moves two misses three it's a little bit random to blend in with this animation but if you weren't blending in with the animation effectively it's just moving every other frame and if you're doing that there's no need for advanced physics. When you let go of the keyboard, it looks like it just takes one frame to slow down and then the rest is animation based. So if you analyze you know, popular games with movement physics, there's really no need to waste your time making you know, real physics. It's more code, it's waste memory, and it doesn't get you anything different than when you scale it down in terms of uh, the math it still ends up just moving one pixel or one pixel every other frame. So there's absolutely no point at this level of resolution to bother applying the real physics. It's easier to do basic physics. Also, the gravity is completely unreal and the curve is not like gravity would happen. So if we apply real gravity, as you'll see, it won't look like this and especially being able to, you know, let go midway. So we'll apply some pseudo physics in this case. So knowing what we know, Let's just chuck in a variable in air, which we'll need eventually. And we could calculate that for now, um, just based on if we're on the floor that we're currently on, like manually, and then we'll work out pulling tile data after for collisions. So for now, we'll just literally check the character's Y position. Uh, and if it is less than, and then whatever tile we are currently on, uh, which is 112. So if it's less than 112, then we are in the air because remember less than goes up not down so this would be calculate if in air and again this will be updated to uh, real code when we actually do collisions and then now we want to check uh, if we were moving so uh, or we are moving so i don't know has movement or something so has movement equals the character's movement force is not equal to zero because bear in mind it can be negative or positive so you have to bear that in mind all the way through it's not just greater than zero, it's just simply not static. So, are we moving? And then what we want to do is if we are moving, so if we have some movement on the X specifically, we'll handle X first, we'll do gravity and Y after, it'll be completely different. We can just firstly do what we did before effectively, which is the velocity X. Now you could, and you normally would with velocity, say plus equals and the character's movement and this would build up velocity as you are holding down um, the button and then you could limit it to max velocity as well we would want a predicted x and a predicted y because this is when collisions come in where we would end up so it would be the character x plus the character's 
velocity. So calculate future position. And although we're not doing the collision detection just right now, we've got a bit of the code ready to go. And then we would call move character. It's the character and the predicted X and just the character's current Y position. Move character to new position. So we haven't done anything new here. The only thing we've done is now added velocity, which you will see. Obviously, if we hold the key, the pug rapidly speeds up. So you have unlimited velocity here. We can just hold it down, it'll overflow and start again. So if you wanted to fix velocity, and bear in mind, like I mentioned, we're probably not going to do any math like this. But all you'd have to do is have, you can just do a const or limit velocity. Uh, an int8 with max velocity x. And I'll just show you this because I know we won't be using this anyway. But let's limit it to say 3 pixels in velocity. And then it's a simple case of checking the characters dot velocity uh, x is greater than max velocity x. Then set it to the max velocity x. And then to go the other way as in left and right, you can just check if the velocity is less than minus the velocity, and if it is, set it to minus. That's a simple, you know, velocity limit, and now you can see you can speed up from three pixels. So for our code, you can see we don't really need to limit velocity because we're never really going to go above a pixel. So velocity is out the window. When you do friction, again, now you're working on almost single pixel or sub single pixel frame so you probably won't want to move every frame you now have a few options you can go to the levels of calculating um, all of the fractional math involved so you can basically start with a larger number and work your way down which if you want to see what that looks like here's some code that i wrote that fully worked and here's just an excerpt of it so you can get the velocity divided by the accuracy of the pixels because you can't do fractional math you can't do floats in Game Boy so you have to multiply the velocity up to hundreds or thousands then divide it back down to work out your sub pixel positions uh, you can divide it by the amount of frames you want to be running the update app for smoothness uh, you calculate the fractional pixels as well as the single full pixels uh, you keep track of frames which will still do then you get add the sub frame pixel movements as you go all this code, which is quite a lot, and it's like 100 lines of code plus when I've written it, boils down to being exactly the same as just manually handling the pixels. So instead of doing all that, which is a lot more messy, we can resort to just some pseudo physics that give exactly the same visual. So instead of fractional math, we can just simply say, uh, let's keep track of frames. So if we just go up to here, make a new u8 and call it frame count Start it at zero it's always important to initialize variables really in c as well because they'll be initialized to random memory values so for debugging and just for cleanliness in c specifically just always initialize them to a default value and then inside every time we're moving this can be tracked for frames as well we could actually use the uh, frame count to match animation frames so if we did that nine animation frames we could limit the uh, frames to nine and then just simply link the animation to the frame and reset when we're standing still and things but for now this is just for the movement so we'll just increase the frame count every time we're moving and importantly every time we are no longer moving just reset the frame count to zero And this allows us now to control the animation to the movement. So if you have animation, and again, similar to Mario, if you analyze Mario 2, his animation character shifts left and right in the 8 pixel frame. So when he's running and doing a certain animation, it's easier to correct it for a slower movement. So if the character's not moving on, say, the second pixel, but your animation frame then stands still, it makes more sense to physically shift the animation forward while the pixel isn't moving forward. So it still gives the impression of smooth movement, which is exactly what Mario does. So we have that power then when we want to, but for now, let's just limit the frame count to what would be animation frames. And we did specify here, total animated frames. So I'm just gonna make that a define now. So player one animation 
keyframes. And as soon as I've done the animation, we can just chuck animation in. It's really simple. It's like, you know, one line of code. Let's chuck a define above. And that'll be nine. And you could make this a variable and pass it in. I'm just doing a define for now. And if frame count is equal to the frames. So it's now got to number nine. That should be zero. Roll around after max frame. So that's the frame counting done. And now all we want to do is apply it to the velocity. So all we're going to do is say over the nine frames if the frame count. And to be honest, you mostly want to be moving on almost all frames. You just want to be slightly slower than one pixel per frame. Otherwise, you're moving 60 pixels a frame. And you probably want to be moving like 50, 45. You, you just want a slight slowdown because it's a little bit too quick for most games. So we could say the frame count equals, you know, 0, 2, 3, 4, 6. But considering most are moving, it's easier to just say when it isn't equal to a certain frame. So let's not move on frame 1, which is the second frame. And let's not move on frame 5. And let's not move on frame 7. So during those times, we won't move. And we'll actually set the velocity to 0, which we could then use friction. And we probably will. So, remove velocity, or no, apply friction. For now, we will just remove it completely, just so they stop. But then we can apply some basic friction. Uh, count. There we go. Move character by movement force. Compare movement to animation frames. And now when we move, you can't tell much difference. And also he's not stopping. <laughs> Which I have... Oh, I'm not sure why he isn't stopping, rather. Oh, because obviously in the frames, this isn't friction. This is just don't, you know, don't apply velocity. Which actually, when you let go... You now reset the frames, and this is where you'd apply velocity. So this is just don't move on that frame. Don't move during this frame. And then friction would apply here. So for now, let's just do the same thing. Velocity equals zero. Helps if you actually have the word else there, not just frames. And there we go. So now we have the movement. So for every one of these, you're skipping a frame. So the less you have, the more you're skipping, if you think about that. So we'll skip every other one for now. 3, 5, and 7. And bear in mind, 9 is just 0 because there's 9 frames in total. That would be every other frame skipping. And you can see now that's probably about where you want to be. So depending on the size of the character, we might want to move a bit more. And if you wanted to move a bit more, you could simply add, um, you know, less skipping. So you could say, don't skip frame zero or one. You probably don't ever want to skip frame zero because that's the first movement, like when you're tapping left and right. But it just gives you that finite control over sub-pixel speed, which you would not be able to get easily um, with real math. You'd be wasting a lot of time doing all the calculations instead of just doing a really simple frame skip method like this. So don't skip zero or one, skip two, so by the time you're doing this, you're skipping two, you're skipping four, you're skipping six. So it's probably easier to think about by doing um, inverted logic. Skip frames two, four, and six. And I think that's probably the speed. Again, when he's animating, probably a bit faster. Skip frames two and six, maybe. So it just gives us a slight reduction. There we go. I think that's a nice speed. And you can't tell visually that you're skipping, you know, two pixels out of every nine. But it gives you that smoothness control. You can see as well the friction. And to be honest, for how small it is, all I'm probably doing the friction is leave it one frame. Let it move one frame and then stop. Because you're only ever moving one frame anyway. So the friction would be fairly simple. All the friction would do is wait for has movement to disappear, which is obviously we currently have movement. 
which I guess isn't going anywhere because we don't remove it anywhere. So this could be stored and on the next frame updated. So let's just make these and call them had movement and make it one frame delayed. So we know the previous frame had movement or not. And then all we've got to do is move this to before, make that default of zero, we weren't moving. After we've done the logic, so once we've done this check and everything, move the character, then we update, are we moving? Or in this case now it's, were we moving? And so long as we don't reset um, that variable of movement force before then, this logic will be fine. So now we have a one frame delayed logic for if we were moving the previous frame. So now we can just say, allow character to move one frame before stopping. So you just don't touch velocity unless um, the had movement X is zero. So the first one, we will have movement, so it will never reset. When we let go on one frame, it will come into here, but the previous frame was still pressed, so it's still one. This will now be false because it's no longer true. It will come into here, but had movement is still one because we've only just let go. It will come out, do this, and then had movement will update to zero. And so long as we're not moving again, it'll come back in the frame after and then reset the velocity. So that will give us a one pixel frame delay in terms of friction. And you can actually tell, I can, I can tell you when I release it, you can kind of tell there is a, a very slight friction. You could go further with that and you could either randomize it or uh, you could start this frame count again. Like, you know, you could stop the frame count and continue to add. Um, so you could move this logic frame count, to be honest, yeah, that logic could move out of here to afterwards. So it's universal uh, frame counting. And then just every time we're in here, you reset. That reset could now be a reset since you let go. So it could just be um, reset frame every time we start and stop moving. And this would have to be tracked different if you wanted to link it to animation now, because you would want to check that you have movement if you're animating as well. But now you could just check if you had movement. So you had movement before, and your character no longer has movement. So that's if you stopped. And then if you put them in brackets, you can do the other way around as well. So stopped or started. And then to start, you would have uh, not had movement, but now you have movement. You then want to reset frame count. This will allow us to have uh, frame counting going on both inside here and inside here when we're not moving. So now you could delay this that we are already a frame behind, or you could just literally now use a frame count equals equals, let's see, eight, the furthest one out of the way. Now we should drag for eight pixels before stopping. And now you'll see that, well, you won't be able to see because you can't tell when I'm pressing, but that doesn't feel like it's dragging, but that'll probably be because if we let go during these two frames, the velocity will be zero. So we actually need to do an else inside the stopping to make sure we keep the velocity actually moving. And then also you can see now it's going to permanently move because we haven't reset it. So we want to lock the frame or something. We can, because we want this probably just to continue to increment, we want to probably keep the roll around permanent, but let's just move the increment individually into each call just so it gives us this control. And then in here, in fact, yeah, let's let's put that back where it was. We'll use the frame counter, but I'm going to use it totally different. It's going to reset for us automatically. 
every time we start or stop. And when we stop in here, we can just say it will be zero at the first. So if frame count, and let's say, let's say for one second. So if it's less than 60, so we can really see that this is working first. Uh, if it's less than 60, then frame count plus plus, and then it just won't come back in once it's above 60. So now you can just say if the frame count equals equals uh, 59, which will be obviously the last call, set the velocity to zero, otherwise set it to one. This should now run once I stop, and it's going instantly because we also need to do the thing I forgot, which is, is we need a flag that was was moving as well. So we know when we've released and we are directly animating, because at the minute, we're basing our logic on movement. But either way, I think we want a flag to just have sliding, let's just call it for now, sliding zero or slowing X, just so we know it's like, you know, we want to start slowing the X. That's defaulted to zero when we stop. So we want this exact logic here in another if. Flag true when we release from movement. If that, then slowing X starts applying. And this will only get reset by in here. So if slowing X equals one, or in this case, you can just do a slowing X because a comparator will do zero or not zero. So if you are slowing X, then we need to start counting the frames and applying velocity. And once the velocity reaches the final step, it sets it to zero. So then there's no velocity. And we also want to reset on the final frame. The slowing X now equals zero. And that should stop the velocity. So there we go. Press, let go. And it takes a second to now slide. Got something wrong with left and right, but we'll fix that in a moment. So if I hold, I move, I let go. And it takes exactly a second to stop. So now we have complete control of the length, which we can now do with, uh, again, a variable or a define. And because we're going to change this, I reckon slow down slow down frames and we'll set it to 60 by default number of frames until we in fact why don't we just pass that in as a variable into the movement logic so it's a bit more usable so movement physics and we can set the slow down frames inside there and we can then do if it equals equals slow down frames minus one if it's less than slow down frames, there we go. And then we just need to pass in now what we want to slow down. So let's do 60 for now, just make sure it's still working. Let's also fix that left and right bug as well. We have uh, a bug where we go left and it moves forward. And that will be because we've done this. So we actually need, can't have the slowing down. Uh, so, well, you can. If you make that a um, signed integer, when you are stopping, you can do slowing was character. So it indicates the direction, basically. If it was greater than zero, um, then set it to one. Otherwise, it must have been going backwards, set it to minus one. And then finally now, I think this will already work. No, there now needs to be slowing x. So continue to move in the direction we were. That should fix that left and right velocity bug. And I think I'll go backwards. <laughs> uh, where's my logic? Movement force is great now, that's right. If I go to the left now, it does the left correct. But now if I go to the right, it does the opposite. Ah, is this check too slow? That's why. Uh, we can't do this check here because we had uh, it's already too late, this movement's gone, because we had movement, but now it's gone. So let's just use the same trick, and let's make the... Uh, what can we do? Because we're keeping hold of that, why don't we just set it to that? So instead of had movement, if it isn't equal 
to one, why don't we just put last movement? Let's just repurpose this, make it more useful. We know which way it was moving. Which way were we moving? Scroll up, and this one is now last movement. And because we can move left and right now, we need to make them integers, not unsigned, so they can actually go negative. Then we need to redo our logic slightly. So this now is if the last movement x equals 0, so we're no longer moving, or rather if the last movement x was moving, but now we're not moving, that's the same logic. And now if we started moving, so if last movement x, which now looks better with the above, if we just do a zero check, so it's visibly more clear. And I guess, the, yeah, because we're not doing a, a zero or one count now, you need to directly check, because it might be minus one, we need to check zero specifically. So started is, if we were not moving, but I don't like the unclarity of this. Some people might read that you know, a bit harder to read, so we'll do it explicit like this. Um, that should be the same there. Flag true when released from movement. So in this case, if we had movement, so that's if last movement isn't equal to zero and it's no longer moving, so same logic. And finally, while moving, uh, why did we have if had movement? That makes no sense, that's actually wrong. So if character dot movement x force isn't equal to zero, that's while moving. Uh, that's all that logic fixed. And now finally, back to what we actually wanted, we now have the previous movement. So that should actually mean this now works because we can use the last movement x value as which way we were moving before we let go. So now do we have logic that works? There we go, slide left, slide right. So you can imagine now you can make a nice easy custom logic for when you're on ice that you can continue. You can also see though midway through friction, if I pressed right and then left, I can kind of break that friction, which makes sense because I'm obviously capable of moving on land and the friction is just the slow down pace. So now we know that's definitely working, we can just tweak our friction and just change it to say, uh, I don't know, five frames and just do this by eye then what we feel. Um, I'd say that's pretty much right. That's a nice amount of movement, maybe a little bit less when you try and do finite movement, maybe three frames. Yeah, that feels nice now. And the speed, I think, once we're animating, uh, will probably be about right. We could always pick up the speed, like we say. We've got finite control of the speed um, by simply checking here. And if you didn't want this check and you just wanted to go at least one pixel a frame, then you could do this which looks smoother to the eye, uh, but I think it's going to be a little bit too fast. And if you wanted to go even faster than one, uh, then you just change the speed that you jump at. But this might look a bit grainy because see how you're kind of jumping to, I suppose you might as well just go, and you're basically going zero, two, zero, two, zero, you know, like you're jumping instead of going, say, more ones. So if you did want to go faster than one, uh, we can just redo this logic to handle um, going, you know, a frame fractional, but more of. Uh, and in fact, to do that, you'd have basically this, like there's a cheat in a sense. So instead of clearing out on them frames, so you're doing one on some frames, two on another, instead of one on some frames, zero. So that's how you can gradiate the speed up and down between one pixel or less than one pixel or more. So kind of fractional math, but in a much simpler way. So that's the basic uh, real movement now, like your left and right movement. And I'll hopefully have the animation for the pug finished before the next video, and then we can get the animation done. So that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. As well, any feedback and comments, definitely let me know. And I'll catch you in the next.